Hello, hello. Welcome to one of my videos. Today is going to be a super noisy one as I have barking dogs. It's in the daytime. And um, I'm going to make this, even though I'm going to be uploading it later, but it's kind of going to be like a live vlog, so to speak, because I'm just going to let it roll. No editing or anything like that. So let's start off. This is the squiggly. Um, I have made a bunch of other prototypes. They're the other squigglies. And I have finally come up with a pattern that I like. And so I'm going to put it onto YouTube, my channel, before I forget it, <laughs> before I move on to another project. So here's Squiggly. Um, it's about 15 centimeters. What tools do I need? Selection of knitting needles. Is a pair missing? What did I do to them? Oh goodness. Rose. Okay, found them. These are my three and three quarters. I have a selection of darning needles and chenille needles, different sizes, four different uh, yarn, different threads that I'm working away or whatever. Um, I have a marker, I have a pen, just in case I want to make notes on my pattern. I have a pencil for pushing in my stuffing. I obviously have a box of stuffing. I use this as well. This is a needle a size, blah, blah, because I have different needles that don't have sizes on them. And uh, what else? Ah, my pattern. Oh, and I also have a sock. Sock is really handy for tucking away the tentacles. I was get in the way. Oh, noisy dogs. I'm going to move the camera so that I'm going to put these down. Page one and page two. So that uh, screenshots can be made. Um, should you show choose. And you can print them out. Get them as PDFs. So there we go. Um, trying to get it as high as possible. Page one and page two. I said take a screenshot and then crop it because I'll be referring to this pattern as I work along. Okay, I had to move the dogs. They're a little bit further away. They're still going to yap and bark, but not right outside the door. Um, I use different size needles simply because some parts of the work I want tighter than other parts, but you can use just one needle, one size all the way through. Um, some of the squigglies turned out larger. And at first I thought, oh no, I used the wrong size needle and it was two o'clock in the morning. No, it's because I put more rows. So that's what happens when a squiggly has more rows um, than a squiggly that doesn't have more rows. Interesting, isn't it? Quite a different squiggly, look at that. So heads up, if you use if you use the same size needle but you add rows you will have a bigger ball <clears throat> so let's get big squigglies away thanks to my friend amy she came up with a name i said i need a name for this the series so for my playlist and she came up with squiggly um so we're going to start off the octopus squiggly with the body. Now, the basic pattern for the knitted, they start from the bottom, they go all the way up to the top in one big fell swoop, comes from the Tula Baby Project here in South Africa. What I have done is basically cropped the pattern halfway through, and then I work the crochet down and then the tentacles. So this is a knit crochet project. If you want the pure knitting project, the Tula Baby de, Tula Baba project, T-H-U-L-A, in South Africa, has the pattern for that. Um, 
So where do we start? I'm using white DK pool skin and it is quite a thickish DK, which I like. It's in my tin so that it doesn't get messy. Pull from the center. Um, you can use whatever DK you want. These, this is 100% acrylic, so it's be fully washable. And then I'm using a blue DK. It's a charity, also South African product, pull skin as well. But this one, this particular one is charity. The other one is not. I found the charity is actually softer. But then again, it's what you have. And um, yeah, we just have to do with what we have. And he sits, this is three, uh, 300 grams. So this one sits in a basket. It's going to be a messy video, but it's it's a live vlog. So we're starting with, now when I say cast on, you're going to see how I cast on. This is my special cast on. You do what you like, how you like it. That cast on later on, I'm going to be using as the basis for the crochet. So I'm crochet, I'm, I'm knitting this part here, and then I'll be turning around. And on that cast on row, for want of a better word, I pick up all the way around, and then I start to crochet. So with my three millimeter needle and 2.5 millimeter hook, I'm gonna be doing my cast on. You cast on the way that you want. I found my other tools. I put them in my basket, which doesn't help at all. There's my crochet hook, two and a half mils. Here's some more three millimeter needles. Put that aside. So I'm going to be casting on. I'm going to be first of all moving the camera. Mm -hmm. Resume a little bit. Here we go. So I cast on using a crochet a needle and a crochet hook. I need a little bit of tail to sew it up. Um, 30, 30 centimeters is a good enough tail to sew it up. It's a small body, it doesn't need more than that. <clears throat> I make a slip knot. This is how I do it. As I said, cast on the way you want. I make a slip knot and then I chain one. And then what I do is I slip my knitting needle, this is a three millimeter, into that first loop there. And then I cast on. It's going to be hook in the front, yarn to the back. So hook in the front, fetch, yarn to the back. Hook in the front, fetch, oops, yarn to the back. Hook in the front and yarn to the back. And I want to continue with this until I have 35. I'll have one on my hook, which will make it the 36th, 36th loop. What I like about this cast on, it gives an absolutely beautiful finish, which is literally a crochet finish. It has the V's of a crochet. And so when later on I come and pick up with my crochet, my crochet in the blue, it'll be as if I was joining two pieces of crochet together. Yarn to the back, hook to the front, yarn to the back, hook to the front, yarn to the back, hook to the front, yarn to the back, hook to the front. <clears throat> Every now and then I push it down the needle. This is a particularly short needle, which is practical for when I'm working at my desk. But if you're working in your lap, you can use a longer needle. Try to keep them a little bit even, at least. And once in a while, I will stop and count. 
I'll just keep that hook in there, put the yarn to the back, spread these out and see how many I have. Two, four, six, eight, ten. Two, four, six, eight, twenty. Two, four, six, eight, thirty. Two, four, five. So I have too many. I'll just slip the ones that I have too many of off. Go back and pick up my loop there. So I have 35 on here, and I have one there, which is 36. Let me check. 2, 4, 6, 8, 10, 2, 4, 6, 8, 20, 2, 4, 6, 8, 30, 2, 35 plus 1. So now I have 36. I will be knitting the body. So this guy, the crochet hook, I'll take him off and put him aside. For myself, I have, I have chosen to, my first row is knit. I'm going to just use the three millimeter. I just written out the pattern and I realized I did not say that. And the pearl will be three and a quarter millimeter. And I'll continue the work in three and a quarter millimeter. That's why it's nice to have a pen because when you add things on. So I'm going to knit in a three millimeter. And then continue in a three and a quarter. So once again, you would think that I would know needle sizes. I don't. It's a three and a quarter. I don't know where I hear it. This I know this one's a three. So I'll take that one simply because I don't have the other ones lying around. It is not this, these dark ones are not good for the videos. So my first row is a knit. Just have that one on the on the needle already. I'll just knit across. Usually I have music playing in the background, or even better yet, a lovely podcast. YouTube has got some lovely podcasts. But you know, with copyright infringement and also podcasts, they're quite particular to the person who's listening to them, so I wouldn't want to play them here. See, I've just dropped one. Pick it up. Not particularly fond of bamboo needles. I bought these. They're so pretty, but the yarn, for me anyway, the yarn sticks on them. I still keep them around. They're handy. So I can't really listen to a podcast, and with music, with copyright, a video can get taken down simply because... It has music in the background that's copyrighted. So it is quiet. So there we have 36. I'm going to put aside three mil and pick up my three and a quarter pony aluminium. Absolutely love these little guys. And my next row is going to be a pearl because I'm working in stocking stitch. I just realized that the mic is quite far away. I'd moved my whole setup last week and I wasn't thinking about the angle of the camera. When I get to the end of this row, I'll just pause and I'll move the mic because it's about 30 centimeters away and I'm sure that makes a difference. So these two rows have just basically anchored the stocking stitch. 
I didn't increase right away. It was a mistake I've made in some of the squigglies. And then it leaves gaps. So let me pause and move the mic. Here we go. Hopefully that's better. <clears throat> so we've done our base, base rows. Now we're going to increase. It's written out the way that I write out things. I increase into the loop from the previous row row from the previous row. So I knit two to get away from the edge. Then I increase one into the loop and I'm going to knit four. And I repeat that nine times and then I'm going to knit one. I'll come to 45 stitches. Now this pattern I wrote out last night as I was knitting. Um, and I'm pretty flexible in my work. You know, sometimes you think, well, there's a knit one at the end and there's not, but you know, you just you just keep on going. If it's 37 stitches instead of 35, 6, or it's 44 instead of 45, don't worry. Just the squiggly will turn out pretty much the same. The only place you have to be qu quite um, particular about having 15 is here, when I have 15 Vs. But for all the rest, relax. <laughs> so increase and then pull. The increase is knit two, increase in loop, knit four, and just continue that across the row. Knit two, just to get away from the edge. And then I increase in the loop. So how do I do it? With the left hand needle, I go underneath here and I pick up that loop. And then I knit it. Knit four. One, two, three, four. Where is that loop? It's underneath from the previous row. So I picked it up with my left hand needle. There it is. I knit into it. And now I'm going to knit four. One, two, three, four. I'm using this finger here to help with the tension. I want it to be fairly tight work. I could have gone down a needle size, but I'm happy with this and just working under tension. So now I've knitted my four. I pick up the loop. So it's an increase in loop. Knit four. One, two, three, four. Increase. One, two, three, four, 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 increase. One, two, three, four. Increase. See, I've come to the end. There's actually two here instead of one. Let's see how many stitches we have. Two, four, six, eight, ten. Two, four, six, eight, twenty. Two, four, six, eight, thirty, two, four, six, eight, forty, two, four, five. So if I've got forty five, yeah, the pattern says forty five. That's fine. Next row is a pearl, <coughs> and that is the back side of the stocking stitch. 
the pearl rows are not increased or decreased. They just basically to anchor the increase or the decrease, which happens on the knit side. I'm going to count the bumps on the back, as I call them. I have four. One bump, two bump, three bump, four. I'm going to continue until I have ten bumps. I'm going to continue a stocking stitch. So you have four bumps on back. Continue stocking stitch until ten bumps on back. And then we're going to start decreasing. And continue in stocking stitch. Basically, will be six rows. Let's see, 22 minutes. Let me see how long it takes to do six rows. I'm going to zoom out a bit just so that I can relax because otherwise, I've got to contort myself to fit into the camera. And I just want to be able to find a comfortable position and then just knit. Little Zaza, she is barking her head off. I don't know if you can hear her. They're normally in my yard when I'm in here, but I've thrown them into the parking lot. And because there's activity there, when I mean, they can't go over to my mum's house, which is 50 meters away, go and sit in her courtyard, but they've decided to be in the backyard, all the puppies, and bark. But it just means he'll sleep well tonight. Have a nice active time in the sunshine. It rained last night. But here in Houting, middle of winter, the sun came out today. But it's still a frosty day. There's beautiful west sun streaming into the car park. It's a private car park. It's not a public car park. The garden has been busy there, so they can dig up the grass if they want to, the puppies. He keeps telling them not to, but when the soil has been freshly turned, it's absolutely delicious for them to dig into it. He's trying to plant grass. Because it's, got, it's a high traffic area, and so the soil has become compacted with all the people walking over it. And uh, with the rain, he's been very busy turning it over the soil. You see, tw almost 25 minutes. How many rows did I do? I think just two. It's a 
difficult to know when I'm not concentrating. The rows that just add up. I've been practicing with the different prototypes of the squigglies to combine the knitting and the crochet. I could make the whole squiggly out of crochet, but I absolutely love the effect of stocking stitch when it comes to faces. Even when I made garter stitch teddies, I liked to stocking stitch the face. These are little comfort, comfort teddies. Um, so that when I added the, the facial features, you could really see the expression. But I've kept for my squigglies, I've kept the facial features very simple. But there's still a prototype. Maybe later I might explore some of the lovely things I did with the eyes when I used to use teddies, when I used to make teddies. I had discs of felt. I'm sure I could get some more felt from the stationery. It's easy enough. They have felt sheets. Um, but you use, use a disc of felt of the same color as the wool that you're working in. And you put it behind the eye, which I haven't done with, with the squigglies. But if you want to make a nice big eye in embroidery, then you put the felt disc behind the stocking stitch and you work in that with the embroidery. It really anchors this, the, the embroidery beautifully. And then you can, you can work on the pupil and the different designs for the eyes. But comfort dolls are generally for older children. Whereas these squigglies are for newborns. I'll be sending them off to the Tula Baba project and they'll be distributed to the young mums come to the hospital with their babies. When we make these toys, we never know. We never know where they're going to go. Back in the 90s, I had a knitting machine before I moved overseas. I had a knitting machine and um, I still have people who, I'm actually wearing a pair now, I made leg warmers as well as jerseys, but I made leg warmers. And I still have people, my auntie just a few days ago sent me a picture of the leg warmers that she's wearing. And then she's had them since the 90s, that's 30 years ago. So let's count how many rows we have. Two, four, six, eight, nine. So I'm almost there. And it's 28 minutes. So probably by 30 minutes. Twenty-eight and a half minutes. I could have pushed pause and come back and done done the rest, but I thought I'd just make it a live vlog. Hey, poor little Zaza, she's so tiny that she, her yap is so tiny as well. Little tiny squeak, she's like she's a little squeaky toy. She's gonna bark herself hoarse. So here we come, the 10th tenth, tenth bump. What does the pattern say? So we're decreasing on the knit rows and we pull all, all the even rows. See, pull happens to be an even row. Sometimes they are uneven rows. But So we've got 45 st stitches at the moment and we begin, we're going to be decreasing by 9 stitches per row. So it's still 36 and I'll just go on down. I didn't write them in because <laughs> I want to count. <laughs> I want to count as I didn't write it in my original pattern. 
So after each row, we'll just count. And now I won't go and see who that is. Someone else can go and see who that is. So decrease. Knit one. Then I knit two together and I knit three. And this is the part that I repeat. I'm just getting away from the edge. That's why I'm knitting one way down the edge. And then after that, I'll knit whatever remains. Here I wrote knit two. And we're going to see about that. We're going to see about that. I'll have to screenshot this pattern when I'm finished because it's obviously got some things that have changed. So I knit one. Knit two together. Knit three. Knit two together. Always tugging it. Keep it under tension. Knit three. One, two, three. Knit two together. One, two, three. Knit two together. One, two, three. Knit two together. One, two, three. Knit together and knit three. Do I need music? We've got the dogs, haven't we? One, two. That's Zoro. I can hear his bark. One, two, three. The two together. And then the two. So you can see there. That's why it looks knit three and then knit two. So actually, that'll be the knit two together. It'll be like the last, if that makes any sense. So let's count the stitches. Two, four, six, eight, ten. Two, four, six, eight, ten. Two, four, six, eight, ten. Two, four, six, eight, twenty. Two, four, six, eight, thirty. Two, four, six, thirty six. Okay. Pull row and then another decrease. I actually sometimes, more often than not, if I want to do something that I haven't done, especially if it's been six months or a year or two years, I will come and watch my own videos. And so I do like to clarify what I'm doing as much for myself, my future self, as for anybody who will be following this video, should you want to. Follow any of my patterns because often I just simply cannot remember, oops, how I did it. Okay. Now the next one is also it's a decrease and we are going to knit one, knit two together and then knit two. So we knit one, get away from the edge. We knit two together. So my decreases are going to be falling on top of each other. And then you get this design. You can see from the top there. That's because all the decreases fall on top of each other. So decrease two together. Knit two. And then decrease two together. One, two, 
And then the last one is knit one. At the end, it will be knit one. See? Okay. That's better, isn't it? It's more clear. Two, four, six, eight, ten. Two, four, six, eight, twenty. Two, four, six, seven. Pearl row. Now it goes very quickly because we have less stitches to work across. In a few minutes, we will be finished. I'm 35 minutes in, I've done lots of talking and demonstrating the tools I use and everything. But you can see this little body can be knitted up fairly quickly. I like to work in series or in um, factory fashion. So I'll probably knit up a bunch of bodies and then do the crocheting. Also, I choose to do different things at different times, depending on how complex the work is and whether I need to concentrate or not. So next row is knit one, knit two together, knit one. And if I have to concentrate, then I will do a particular part of the job. But if I make a whole lot of them at once, then I can do the eyes all together, do the stuffing all together, etc etc now that I've found a prototype which I'm very happy with so it's knit one which together the previous decrease row will be a good guide you can see where you're going and if you find that you have gone wrong somewhere if you want to keep that pretty star pattern or like like it's almost like a starfish pattern then then you undo it if you don't mind, you just continue, but it unfortunately it will it will show up on the little head. So ideally, you are concentrating and making sure that you have this lovely ridge that's created by the decrease. Turn backwards. Now let's just count the stitches: two, four, six, eight, ten, twelve, fourteen, sixteen, eighteen. The last one to do. <coughs> Pull this row. Working under tension. See this little finger here, it flicks it down. Because we are going to be stuffing them. Um, we don't want the stuffing to come out the different holes. The last row, and knit one and the two together. Well, not the last row, the last decrease row. There will be one row after this of pearl. Knit one to get away from the edge. Knit two together. Knit two together. Yeah, I really am tugging the yarn to really keep it under tension. Because it can very easily gape when you decrease like this right next to each other. You don't want your work to gape, because the stuffing will come out. Give it a nice tug. Come to the end, and there's one lonely guy, knit him. Two, four, six, eight, ten. Okay, at end, knit one. Don't ask me how that worked out. Let's see how many decreases. One, two, three, four, five, six, seven, eight, 
From that one, I have decreased eight, and then I knitted one. Decrease eight. You see, that's why I'm writing out this pattern carefully now this time. There we go. Pearl last row. Now cut a tail, pull through remaining stitches. Do not pull closed because we'll stuff through. We'll stuff through this hole and then we sew up the side. Sorry, I've got little tiny baby little burps. Tiny little burps. Oops, it's gone. The needle went through the, the ply. Okay, my last row was a pearl. Now I'm going to cut a tail. I'm going to do about 20 centimeters. Cut tail, 20 centimeters. Here, yeah, tail. 30 centimeters. Okay. Blunt darning needle. Now, what I do is I hold the stitches. I prepare my darning needle. I prepare everything because I'm going to be pulling this needle out. And if I'm not careful, I could drop one of those stitches and then my work will come unraveled. I hold my stitches with my fingers, I pull out the knitting needle and I immediately put, you push the darning needle all the way through and pull it through. Do not close it tightly, you'll be stuffing through there later. You want to spread out as much as you can because you'll be stuffing through there. Now you think, oh my goodness, that looks really small. Are you sure? It doesn't look like there's much there. Once you stuff him, you will see. He'll take shape. I sew up this edge here. You don't have to go all the way to the top because you want to be careful that you do not catch any of these top stitches. If you do, later on you cannot pull it closed because you've worked into these stitches here and you've worked into this here and you've basically made a mess. So... Err on the side of caution and work just until maybe two rows down. You will be working your crochet into this row here. So you want the join to be neat. I'm going to create, I call these V's. A V is basically that part and that part, it creates a V. I'm going to be creating a V here on the edge, now that's my slip knot. So my slip knot, he's going to go underneath. I don't want him. I'm going to be creating a V to join these two sides. You can either come back or you can go straight to the other, over to the other side, it doesn't matter. So I'm going across, oops. Can be a little bit annoying. I'm going across to the V on the side, and then I'm coming across to the V on the side. Now I haven't pulled it very tight because I don't want to work with my slip knot. I'm going back to the V on that side. Slip knot is falling to the back, and I'm coming back to the V and I'm closing it off. Do not pull it too tight. You want to be able to come later on to crochet in there. And once you crochet in there, because I'll start crocheting further away. I won't crochet, start over there. I'll start a little bit further away. Once you've crocheted across, it'll pull the whole thing together. Now I go underneath to the what basically this is the side, opening it up a little bit. And then you select one of these and one of those. 
on each side. Remember, you want to keep this up here big enough to work through. So I'll crochet through there, I'll crochet through there, crochet through there, crochet through there. Turn your work sideways. And we're going to be going up and then down and then up and down and up. We're not whip stitching. We are going from side to side. You can either work right on the edge. I'm not going to. I'm going to work a bit further away. If it was a garment, I would work literally on the edge of the edge. So there's absolutely no bump on the other side. But this is not a garment. It's a toy. So it does not matter that there's a seam on the other side. I'll show you the seam now. Now it's lumpy and bumpy, and a garment you would not want a tiny baby to be lying on that. Big people, it's fine. Big people, very seldom, unless they're bedridden. But big people, even big children, they run around in their clothes, they don't lie in their clothes in the knitted garments. But if someone, if you're lying on a seam, it's really horrible. Insufferable, actually. See, look there. Those bumps, you think, oh, that's nothing. But you try and lie on those, awful. <clears throat> so, yeah, for a garment, I would literally, you wouldn't see that in the back. So, I'm just going across from one side to the other. You'll see it pretty much works out. And remember, we did not increase, and we did not increase or decrease on the edge. And this is why it allowed us, it allows us now <clears throat> when we're sewing it up to have a nice edge to work with. So I'm going to stop here. Oops, I've fallen off the screen. Sorry about that. I'm going to stop here. So I do not want to in any way catch this yarn and I won't be able to close it later. It's very frustrating. Happens to all of us. See how nice that edge, that how nice and clean that is? That's from the inside. Okay, so I'm going to end this video here. And so this will basically be will be the um, knitting, knitting body for the squiggly squad octopus. And um, then we'll come to crochet. Okay, so I'll see you in the next video. Cheers for now.